All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Shannon. I am the operations manager for Best Choice Realty. Um, and tonight we're, we've, we are in for a treat. We've got uh, Lori Palomino. She is our in-house marketing and graphic design and all things print, basically, and marketing. Um, who's here to kind of show us a bit about uh, using specifically to how to use Core Fact really to help um, some of you, especially if you're kind of getting started with farming and I'm trying to establish my niche market, things like that. Um, and she's going to kind of go through, and I've got questions that I'll kind of pick her brain throughout this as well. Um, there's always something to learn, even for me. Um, but she's going to walk us through how to use Core Fact and order some just listed. Um, postcards. We actually are going to use a real world scenario. We had a listing out in Maple Valley um, and we're going to kind of go through what that process would look like. So you guys are setting yourselves up for success. Um, a lot of people, they, they get nervous when we say core fact. Um, some people have mixed feelings about it and some people are like, this is amazing. Other people are like, oh, I didn't get a good value out of it. Well, part of it is just making sure that you're set up for success. Um, I would argue that if you're not using the right list, that could be part of the problem, narrowing your search, narrowing your data, the people that you're actually targeting, um, and also figuring out why you're sending out a postcard. If there's not any sort of added value um, in getting a postcard out, if you wouldn't find value in, in a consumer, then why would you expect someone to call you or to get value out of themselves? So. I'm going to uh, turn it over to Lori here, um, and she's been, she's shared her screen. So those that are able to just take a look at it, and you can, can follow along. Uh, we are recording this call, so if you're popping on our YouTube channel, you can go ahead and hit pause if you need to, if you're following along that way as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's go ahead and get started, Lori. Okay. Hello, everybody. So some of you are familiar with Core Facts and some of you may not be. If you haven't signed up for a free account, I would encourage you to do so. Um, if you do that, then you can put all of your, you can have your headshot uploaded. Our logos would be uploaded for you, the colors. So it just kind of makes life a little simpler and it's totally free to sign up for an account. So um, if you haven't done that, um, make sure you add that to your to-do list. So tonight we're going to go over how to do a just listed postcard. And this obviously how you do these postcards applies for whatever type of postcard you want to you want to use that they have to offer. But we're specifically just going to do a just listed um, and we're going to be uploading a list that we got from a title rep. So that's something that um, if you have a listing and you want to request a list from your title rep, you can go ahead and email, call them. And it's usually just a few dollars. Isn't that right, Shannon? Yeah. So for this, for this specific example, um, the Maple Valley house that we have, um, and I'm not, I don't think we have it on the screen, but I'll just tell you uh, briefly about it. So we've got basically a main view home. It's, it's a newer construction built about a year ago. And for this particular home, we didn't necessarily want to target the neighborhood that it's in because it's it, the neighborhood it's in is a bunch of new construction homes. The competition is literally the model home. So for us, we wanted to narrow that search quite a bit, um, going out maybe a little bit further outside of the neighborhood, going out maybe half a mile, um, or targeting homes. You can request this from the, from the uh, customer service at any of the, the tile companies that you want to work with. Um, for, so for this one, I asked Cody over at Chicago. I said, hey, Cody, I need um, a, a list of about 200 people, um, ones that have been living in their home for five years or more. I don't want the ones that just moved in literally six months ago. It's not gonna do me any good. Um, especially when I'm doing a long term marketing ploy like this. So um, my takeaway would be make sure you're narrowing as much as you can. Um, and if and try not to do, I mean, 200 is probably about right. Um, but don't ever do more than 500. It's not going to be worth your time. And it's going further out from the listing that you're trying to use. Okay, so... Once we're into core fact here, you want to make sure that you're within their store. So you can see listed down here on the left side, you'll see all of the products that they offer. We're gonna go down to postcards. 
and they have them broken out by category. I'm going to choose um, out of the just listed. So they have different sizes that you can choose. Um, obviously, that changes the price somewhat. You might want to run them a couple different ways depending on what your budget is. We're just going to do the eight and a half um, by five and a half jumbo card tonight. So if as you scroll down the page, you can see they have all sorts of different um, postcard options. So it, it, pretty much anything that would satisfy anybody's taste, you can find on here. So that's kind of nice about this. So I'm to go with, I'm sorry. So be, before you click in, yeah, Lori, I just wanted to kind of pick your brain on sizes. Um, some people, they're like, which size should I do? Should I do this size or which is that size? Obviously, there's going to be a cost differential. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the consumer, what do you think would be? I always say go bigger. Bigger is going, I mean, if, if they're taking something out of their mailbox, uh, they're less likely, it's less likely to get it lost in all of the other mailers that you get. So I always say if, if you can go bigger and it's 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 nicer to look at it's you know it's it's less easy to toss immediately i think so that would be that's just my opinion on that okay okay so um this particular house has a lot of nice photos so i'm going to go with this option because i can put four photos on this one so i'm just going with this one Okay, and then you go and select the back of your card. And Corefact has tons of different backs as well. So you just basically scroll through and figure out, I mean, you can see they've just got pages and pages of backs. So it's kind of whichever one appeals to you, you can edit all of them. So again, it's just a, it's just a personal preference. I'm just gonna go with the simple back. Um, so I'm gonna select that. Then I hit continue and I'm going to name this. So it's going to be since I'm using my account, if you're actually going to see all of my info is going to pop in here instead of Rochelle's, I'll edit it um, when I go to send hers out. But just just so you're aware of that, when you have your account, it's nice because it's going to just immediately plop in all of your information. So I'm going to go ahead and name the card. And then it brings us up to this edit screen. So the one thing that you want to pay attention to when you're looking at this is this little up in the left hand, you'll see this little this little lock. You want to, you can either unlock it or lock it. If it's locked, you're just going to be able to edit the areas that, um, that they want you to. But if you unlock it, then you can actually, you have the ability to kind of move things around. You don't have to, generally they're set up to be edit it exactly the way they need to without moving stuff around, but it's just something to pay attention to. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is upload the photos. So I'm just going to click into that box and then I'm going to go to this upload button up in here. It's going to allow me to browse for all of the images. So I'm going to pick the three images that I'm going to want for my postcard. So I know I want that. I like the back of the house living room and people like usually a kitchen, kitchen. right? <laughs> yeah, people like to see kitchens. That's the people one I love kitchens. For. Yep. <laughs> so it's just going to upload your files. And here's when you can so up here, you can see all the, the images laid out the ones that we uploaded. So if I click on the box, you'll see there's a little dotted line around it. That's the one that is actually the active box. So I'm going to choose the main image. And what's nice again about Corefect, it's really easy. It's just going to like auto, it's going to fill it up for the right size that you need it to be. If you wanted to though, you could crop it. You can move it around. You could make it um, a little bit bigger in the space if you wanted to. So you do have that capability to edit the photos. So then I'm just going to click on the others and just choose the images. It's seriously just this fast. Oh, did it not choose? Chose my last one. Let's see here. And there's my last one. 
So then when I've got all the pictures in the way I want them, I just click done. And then you can move on to editing. You can change up here in this, this little text box is where you would change it if you wanted to change uh, the, the header that you have there. If you don't, you can just leave it as is. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and change the price. I like to keep um, the listing open when I'm doing postcards so I don't have to retype anything. So I've got my listing open and I'm just going to copy and paste the address into place. So again, less room for error if you don't have to, if you don't retype anything. And I just go up to this text box, I just paste it in and I click done. So all of the things that you can edit, you'll be able to click on and you'll see that there are little um, dotted lines around the editable areas. Five bedrooms. As you can see, it's very quick to make these. And see, and as I mentioned before, it just auto fills all of my information. There's my name, phone number, although for whatever reason, there's not dashes. So you do just want to double check to make sure it came in correctly. Okay. So that's, that's how quick and easy it is to do the front of the postcards. And we just go to the back. And again, just double check to make sure your information looks the way you want it to. Um, now my photo, if I decide, you know, I want it to look more like an actual headshot, I can kind of zoom in, edit that a bit. Maybe I want these boxes moved down a little bit. So really anything that you can, you can click on, you can edit in these templates. Yeah. One of the one of the takeaways to people who do postcards and do them well, and we have some agents in our office that do farming and do postcards really, really well, is they always say, if you've got a headshot, it better be on the postcard. Basically, it's just, it's your face. It's, we're one of the few industries that's very, um, uses a lot of pictures of, of you and, and it's to stay top of mind. So um, don't lose the opportunity really. My takeaway from them is always make sure your photo is on mail pieces that you're sending out to people. Yeah. So, in, and back here, you know, they do have some text just um, put in here for you. If you wanted to change that though, you can put a completely different message back here. So if you happen to find a back that just, you want to type something else in there, you can, you can edit that completely as well. Yeah. And then down here, they also, um, Corfac just drops in logos that people might want on their card. We'll remove the Realtor Association. You can then, if you want to move things over, you can. Um, so that's that's basically as simple as it gets of editing these postcards. It just literally takes just a few minutes. So once you've got everything looking the way you want it to look, you just hit continue. Or if you want to come back to it, you can hit save. And if you've got an account set up, it's going to save all of your your designs that you're working on. Yeah. I think, I think also if you're doing a postcard for this particular listing too, when we order it, it's, it pays to be personal, right? So on that section on the back, you have the ability to customize, right, Lori? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we could say we could be as hyper local as we want to be, and we're only sending this out to 200 homes. You know, let's, let's get the biggest bang for our buck and yeah. maybe put a little market update in there. You know, homes are selling fast in this area. I live and work in this area. My kids went to school in this neighborhood, you know, like things like that to really establish yourselves as a local expert um, and to give them an update. There should be every message that you send out, including these just listed, just sold, should have something of value. Yep. Okay, so now we're at the part where we're going to upload the list that we got from our title rep. Now, I will tell you that. It depends on the way the title rep formatted the the list. You might have to open it in Excel, and um, sometimes they come with extra information that you obviously are not going to upload, so you can delete those fields out that you don't need. Um, I did a little bit of cleaning up with my list already, so I'm ready to import it. 
So basically what, what CoreFact does is it looks at this list and it's trying to, um, your fields don't necessarily match their exact fields. So it kind of decides if it can interpret the list property properly for you. So we'll see what happens when I open this one up. And I can see I chose the file. I just clicked on it and I just hit continue. And it's telling me that I have one of the fields that I have to um, map manually for them. So it'll give you a hint down here. It's going to tell you what needs to be changed. So I'm going to select this one. And it looks like I need site address. Okay, so all I did was basically click through that drop down menu just to look for the information that it the field that needed to be named so it would be able to read it properly. So now it says all the fields have been mapped. I'm ready to continue. So it accepted my list and that's good. It's going to give you kind of a just a little snippet so you can make sure that they if you did have to do any mapping manually, you'll get to see what the what your addresses are going to look like. Obviously, it's very important that that they're correct. You're going to be paying to mail these. So if you wanted to, you can you could um, if you had groups set up within CoreFact, you could decide where you wanted to save it. I do not have that, so I'm just going to have it. It's going to create a new group, and I'm just going to continue. And it's going to upload all of our data. So that's already been done. If I want, I can send myself a copy. It's going to pull up my address. So I'm just going to say, so that way you can get a sample of the card that you're sending to everybody. And again, at this point, we just hit continue. It gives you some optional things you can purchase. I probably wouldn't purchase any of those. <laughs> <laughs> So this is where you get you can a one chance to proof your card again. So this would be a good time if you did any of your own um, added your own copy and you typed it in there. Definitely take the time to uh, read through it to make sure you don't have any typos. If you want to, you can download a proof and if you want to print it out and proof it that way, you can do that. So again, I always suggest to people you always want to have even have somebody else look at it quite honestly when you're typing it yourself sometimes it's really hard to catch things so having somebody else read through it is always a good plan i'm just going to say accept everything and then i'm going to add it to my cart so that one and that's simple as that then you just get to check out and it's going to um, mail it it's going to send a copy to you if you selected that and it's going to mail it to your entire list so all of that obviously took me a little extra time just clicking through it with you guys, but you can see you can put together a postcard. I mean, start to finish in less than 10 minutes. Yeah. So it's it's a good um, it's a good way to go. CoreFact is one of the more user friendly um, companies to mail stuff out. Um, postage is postage pretty much anywhere. So I just kind of would go, you know, go with the program that is easiest to use, and I think that that they're right up there. And and plus having the added benefit of us having a best choice um, CoreFact account. So then your logos are already in there properly. They're gonna look right. You can have your information in there and it just kind of, it speeds up the process even more. Yeah. So what, um, I mean, this is, this is beautiful. I mean, we're gonna send this out to our farm, but what do you think that you would tell someone who's interested in maybe doing a core fact, you know, just like basically what we've done for their listing. I don't know, what words of advice do you think you would give them, Lori? <laughs> as far as if I'm wanting to send out a postcard you know like what what would your words of advice be for me <laughs> well I would just um I, I would I would keep it simple when you're when you're getting the hang of doing it um obviously just think about you know who you want to target for for your list think about your budget um how much money you want to spend on it um and then I mean it's it's really simple I mean really no words of advice necessary it's just yeah. teaching yourself to to go through the process and do it correctly. And once you've done it one time, it's, it's all very simple. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's, it's also the uh, long game, right? I mean, That's for a lot true. of these postcards, uh, I think we, we were just talking about this earlier mm -hmm. where it's um, yeah, we can send out one postcard, but where you get the, where you win is in the follow-up. So some people are getting really creative with some of these mailers and things like that. They're using programs to get email addresses from these lists. So um, if you haven't checked out Exact Dial, some people are using that program. Um, and it's 
fairly affordable and they can get additional information from these lists. Title and escrow companies, they can only give you so much um, legally. So, <laughs> so they're, they're gonna give you certain things that they're restricted to because they're um, uh, managed by title and trust commissioner. So um, keep that in mind, but it's, it's definitely a long, long term. Yeah, no, obviously with the just listed and just sold, those are gonna be kind of just targeting where you just had your listing. Mm -hmm. If you were to actually pick an area that you wanted to farm repeatedly, then that is where, yes, you kind of have to settle in and maybe be patient because yeah. consistency is what's going to work with, with these types of the, the farming. Yeah. Again, you know, unless you list in the same um, neighborhood over and over again, you may only be sending a just listed or just sold is, I would say, just more branding for you in that area. But if you're actually talking about farming a particular neighborhood repeatedly, then yes, I would definitely look at that, decide, yeah. you know, what you do have for a marketing budget, how much you want to spend, if you want to send something monthly, um, bi-monthly, mm -hmm. just kind of really kind of plan it out. And then yes, be consistent because to just send um, to farm a particular area once or twice, I don't really think it's probably worth, it's probably not worth the money for you to do that. I yeah. think somebody has to, um, see your name numerous times before you're going to become top of mind with the farming. Right. And I think if you're doing a one-time type of mailer too, I, one thing I saw one of our agents up in, um, I think it was West Seattle, they're doing, they did a mailer similar to kind of what we did here and they piggybacked on it and they went door knocking to the same group of people. And it was just kind of like, you're winning on the follow-up because they're like, oh yeah, you got that mailer I sent out last week, right? Oh, if not, you know, here's a flyer. Here's what the market's looking like. And they're door knocking. And the people who are going out and just getting, you know, seeing people I know with COVID and everything like that, some people are more nervous than others, but it's, you're going to win on the follow-up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Give it a try. And we had a couple questions or comments that came through the chat. And it looks like, uh, I think it was Peter was having some trouble with some of these undeliverables. What I would recommend is that you talk with uh, the customer service rep for where you got the list. Oftentimes they can, they can help you recover or give you some additional names. Um, but usually there's a reason that some of them will come back undeliverable. Work with them, figure out, keep those postcards that come back undelivered and see, if, see what they're willing to do for you. Um, and yeah, it, some of these people are great price stamps alone for handwritten mailers recently cost me about, you know, yeah, yeah. Some of these stuff is expensive if you're doing these out on your own. You do it through Corfac, they're going straight to people's mailboxes. You're paying for the postage too. <laughs> it pays for itself in time, really, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and other ideas for piggybacking on a postcard. Yeah, I actually, you know, some people, it depends on what you're willing to do. Um, the door knocking has been, people find a lot of success with that, with doing just listed, just sold specifically, um, because you already have their addresses, you literally have their names. Um, another thing that some people have tried is they do a, they do the reverse lookup, like I mentioned earlier, using a program. Um, I've heard good things from Exact Dial recently, um, so you can give that a try. Some people, they, uh, they customize like heavily on these postcards for just listed, adding market data, that sort of things, but it has to have a call to action. Um, it, they do also have like Corfac has, um, if you have a personal website, you can choose one of the backs that have the QR codes. You can put in a custom URL. They yeah. also have, um, like a, a valuation type, um, software through Corfac that you could look into if you wanted, you know, people could, they use that, um, QR code and they put in a pin that is on the postcard and then you can track them through that. So there's, there's lots of different variables that you can look at. Um, I just chose a very simple one, but spending yeah. some time on here and trying to figure out exactly what you want to do and what your goal is, and then figuring out, you know, how, how to do it would be, would be time well spent. Right. Cause I mean, if you're just, if you're trying to get the word out about your listing, that's one thing, right? That's basically a branding piece. You're not looking necessarily for leads, but you're trying to generate leads from a postcard, it has to be personalized. Mm -hmm. uh, the personalization and the follow-up is, is really where it's going to be. So well, obviously in this market, most people are probably sending more just sold than just listed. So by the time they <laughs> the mailbox, it's probably yeah. in the sold category. Yeah. But, um, 
but yeah, it's, it's a simple process and very easy and, you know, utilize your, um, your reps because they're there to help you for, with your lists. And so based my takeaway, I don't know about you guys, but my takeaway is definitely, if you're going to do a postcard bigger is better. I didn't know that. So Lori says they get the jumbo cards if you can afford to, um, and it'll, it'll be a better, um, you'll at least get better eyes on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. If, uh, if other people want to pipe in on the chat, you're welcome to. We'll, we'll hang out here for another minute. Um, but other, otherwise, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, what size card did you just do, Lori? Do you mind? Looks like this you have an eight and a half by five and a half. Okay. Yeah. And that seems to be like the standard size, right? That's pretty common. Yeah. They, I mean, that's, most of these companies that do this, they refer to that as the jumbo size postcard, but yeah, it's pretty common. Okay. Yeah. And then do you know if uh, Corfax, someone sent me a personal message, if they have um, different stocks as well, or is it pretty standard across the board? You know, actually I haven't even, I haven't looked into that. Um, I assume that they probably just have their, I, I think they're a glossy card stock, but that would be something that you could probably look in some of the, in the description. I actually didn't even pay attention to that. Yeah. And one thing, uh, one thing I'll also mention too, that Corfac does a good job as they always have that non-solicitation clause on there. If any, anytime you're doing any sort of marketing, um, there should be a non-solicitation, especially when you're doing mailers or anything on the web. Um, that way you're, it, it's a clause. If you want to message me after this call, you're welcome to, but it's basically, in essence, if uh, it's a non-solicitation clause, if you're, for some reason, you're viewing this and you already have a listing agent or a buyer's agent you're working with, I'm not intending to solicit business from you. Um, we want to have that clause on there because we are in a cooperative MLS. So, so perfect. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, and we'll touch base with you this next week. We'll get the recording out to everybody in case you need it. Um, and then we'll have another video, I'm sure, with Lori soon.